Their story is extraordinary. Their art is spectacular. The Hmong people came from Laos, through the jungles, across the Mekong Delta, through Thailand refugee camps, and finally to America. It's ironic that these immigrants, known as the Yellow Rain people because of the chemical and biological agents deployed against them in the Vietnam era when they secretly assisted the CIA as a diversionary unit along the Ho Chi Minh Trail, have come to America to create a sensation with their unique textile art. It's called Pandao, and it's on exhibit in the Owens, Illinois Art Center in the World Headquarters Building in Toledo, Ohio. The exhibition called Mong Couture is a testimony to a struggling people's ability and will to survive. Some 350 to 400 Hmong have established a new life in Toledo, and like their counterparts in other U.S. cities, they have found themselves in a strange land and culture, faced with a tremendous language barrier and little or no employment. They turn to their needlework, their art, for income. But lacking the sophistication and expertise of American marketing know-how, their craft went virtually unnoticed and unsold. Their plight came to the attention of several prominent Toledoans, who sympathized with their predicament and recognized their tremendous artistic talent. They founded the Common Thread, a nonprofit organization to provide income for the workers and social services for the families. The artwork is intricate, detailed, and a labor of love. Deemed commonplace in their native Laos, their handiwork has assumed a position of high fashion in this country. It truly needs no museum walls. It's a wearable art, which they have done for centuries, a practice of stitching and embroidering passed down from generation to generation. When I was 10 years old, uh, my mother taught me how to have the needle and sew the pan down on the material. So uh, after that, I can learn by myself. To make the Hmong work a viable business, it was necessary to market their wares. Enter Washington, D.C. and New York designer Kay Elliott, a former Toledoan, who, with the help of Bill Blass, created a series of elegant, highly fashionable evening gowns. The Hmong women prepared the ornate collars, cuffs, and stoles in Toledo, and a New York workroom conformed them into stunning, wearable art. Well, what we hope we have done is incorporate two different wonderful things. We've taken what could be called a designer dress and made it more wonderful by using the best elements of the Hmong or any particular ethnic style. So, for instance, the snail, which is the round thing. We have taken the snail and embroidered it with silk thread and with wonderful pearls and bugle beads and done it in many cases in monochromatic with a double face silk satin so that it doesn't look bright or vibrant or something that someone would wear to a peasant wedding or to, for a peasant gown. They are very much what you would wear to the most elegant black tie thing you could find. We want you to feel when you step out of the car that I look fantastic. I look the best I possibly could. The gowns are one of a kind and while inspired by the garment and fashion industries, it is the artwork which is decidedly Hmong and sets them apart from all others. Of the 23 on display, none draws more attention than the wedding dress, created of pure white raw silk and is embellished with delicate pastel Hmong needlework. But designer Elliot argues it's not just a wedding dress. Of course, everybody has to have a, a wedding dress, and that could be a wedding dress, it could be a debutante dress, and it is a textured silk, and um, the sleeves all have a china silk, the, the multicolor, and the belt is lined with china silk, and the entire inside is lined with china silk. With a line of fashionable gowns under its belt, the common thread turned to other articles, suitable to Hmong artwork and saleable in the American market. Pillows, large and small, each handcrafted and fashioned with Hmong designs. Table linens, spectacular ornate claws, so dramatic they double as tapestries and wall hangings. Placemats, napkins, and table runners, all accented with the traditional Hmong designs. Evening bags, totes, and even Hmong lunch bags, unique designs on traditional items, and accessories, cummerbunds and bow ties for the well-dressed gentlemen's after six wardrobe, sashes and belts for women of high fashion. Their work is unique. Their future is optimistic. Anne Stranahan, founder of The Common Thread. 
they were unable to find jobs, these people that had helped us so much, and uh, compassion for these people who are probably the most primitive people to come to America in 300 years. And I found out more about their struggle trying to adapt to this civilization, to this country. And I thought we were going to, they can't get jobs. Toledo was going into its own economic depression. They couldn't have come at a worse time. So I said, but this is something that's marketable, this skill. And it was clear that the native hangings, the Pandar by themselves, although they have a very grateful audience amongst people who collect art hangings, were not going to sustain the Hmong. So we thought, all right, what we'll do is we will take the same handwork skills and the art of the Hmong and design clothes, pillows, home furnishings, accessories, belts, and so forth that American, uh, fashionable American women and homeowners and now men will see and want to buy. Each work in the Hmong Couture exhibition touts the Hmong's ability to create intricate designs. That is the art. And each work is symbolic, reflecting the animus religious beliefs of early Hmong culture, a doctrine that the soul is the vital principle of organic development and conscious life is linked to nature. Points are mountains, small squares are flowers. The shell and the snail speak of shelter, and geometric maze-like motif implies losing and finding one's way. The work is meticulous cutwork, embroidery, and applique, sometimes as many as five layers. Whatever the design for the fashion conscious, the fabrics are the medium. Expensive raw silks and satins, well over $100 a yard. But the Hmong workers are sure of their skill, and they cut and sew with little regard for price. And if they should make a rare mistake, that's all part of the art. We can decide which way you can go to fix, so we can fix. Hmong Couture brings the story of the Hmong to light. It's a story of people helping people, a story of a people on the run becoming self-sufficient, and it's a success story. All the things like a hard to find a job. The success has uh, been so far is that the, we're selling the dresses as wearable art, which of course they are, as one of a kind. To the Hmong, it's more than a job. It's an art and yet a paradox. Exquisite artwork and design from common agrarian people. Jeff Kuhlman, Toledo, Ohio.